Many of you like to speak the languages I created, but exactly how good are you at it? Good enough to impress me? Let's take a look at you speaking High Valyrian and Dothraki from Game of Thrones. Louder, you're shouting it from the back of a horse. In George R. R. Martin's books, there were only two full sentences of High Valyrian. There was Valar Morghulis, which is all men must die, and Valar do Hairis, which is all men must serve. To get this uh, kind of like must verb form in there, I decided, all right, let's split this into three and make it basically non-past, past, and then atemporal or timeless. So by adding the timeless uh, designation to these verbs, that gave us all men must die, as opposed to all men are dying or all men died. It's just a, a general truth about the world. All men must die, all men must serve, and that was how I did it. This is Amelia Clark as Daenerys speaking High Valyrian. <laughs> In this scene, she is able to reveal to the slave master Krasnys that she speaks Valyrian, and to do so, she uses the phrase Zaldrizes buzdarixos daor. Zaldrizes buzdarixos daor. Now this phrase was just, a dragon is not a slave, and that's all I was given. I decided to add a little bit to it. The version of Valyrian that Krasnys, the slave master, speaks is called Astapori Valyrian. It's the Valyrian that's spoken in Slaver's Bay, and it's not exactly the same as High Valyrian, the language that Daenerys speaks. So then what she does is when she says a dragon is not a slave to him in High Valyrian, she takes his word for slave and puts it in place of the High Valyrian word. She does this in order to make it absolutely clear to him that she understands his language, not just Valyrian in general. She understands his language. That's how the, I decided to add that in there just to make it clear that uh, you know, he was gonna be in trouble. Now, some people, when they've watched this scene, have noticed that she mispronounces the word which she does, or she mispronounces a word. So what she should say is, Zaldrizes buzdari ixos daor. What she says is, Zaldrizes buzdari iskos daor. So she switches the S and the K. Zaldrizes buzdari iskos daor. And so yes, that was a straight up mistake. That'll happen. But it was kind of a fortuitous mistake. In Astapori Valyrian, this is a language that descended from High Valyrian. And as it descended, any time there was a KS sequence or a TS sequence or a PS sequence, they switched. And so it went actually in his version of Valyrian from Ixos to Iskos. Her character, Daenerys, when she says that, even though it was a flub by Amelia Clark, it's like she was still had in her head that she was speaking Astapori Valyrian before switching back. I thought it was really cool. And the thing that I like best about her pronunciation, her delivery, is the intonation and the rhythm of it. Imagine you have the sentence, the man did not see the woman. In High Valyrian, that is, uh, rather than saying it like that, she, it would be like, you know, and so you could hear kind of like how, was, how she was really kind of rolling into the higher intonation that she would allow to land on these longer vowels. And it just, I don't know, it sounded really good. It sounded like it had a rhythm. It sounded like it had a character. Whereas when I was pronouncing it the first time, it was just kind of like, well, these are the sounds and let's do it. So after I heard that, I was like, that's it. That's the sound. And so then for thereafter, I just did that. Now here's you reciting the clip we just saw. <laughs> The long vowels were not as long sometimes. Certainly you weren't getting the E vowel, but that's all right, Amelia doesn't get it either. There's a vowel in High Valyrian that's written with a Y. This thing is uh, not pronounced E, it's pronounced E. In other words, it sounds just like E, but you round your lips, E. But uh, new hues. Nuhus. That's how you say my. So, 
Valirio Munoengos Nushis Isa. All right, that's what the line is. Oh, also, and but of course, this is gonna be everything for Americans. You gotta trill those R's. Any word that has an R in it. Like, if it's, if the word has an R in it, it's supposed to be trilled. Ritzas Grace. All right, you did pretty good. I really, really like your intonation. You were able to really capture that very well. Definitely practice on trilling those R's. I know it's hard, um, but it can be done. Uh, you listen to Give It Away Now by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're doing it. Think about it. You, just, just listen to that, listen and repeat, you'll get it. This is the cast of Game of Thrones speaking High Valyrian and Astapori Valyrian. Torgonudo. He should not be here. No, but he is. Our queen ordered him exiled from city. Our queen would be dead if not for him. Sadreji. Si eski murki inoneshi. Bi kavala. Krobo. Niki pesa kisor udi drejo isa. Muna nia valirio mila pungili isa. It's actually kind of funny. In this scene, right, you have uh, Peter Dinklage, Jean Glenn, uh, Natalie Emanuel, and Jacob Anderson. And the people who actually speak the language are everybody but Jacob Anderson, who is legitimately the best performer in a created language I have ever seen in any show or, or movie I've ever worked on. And yet he's just speaking English in this scene. <laughs> I mean, first, so yeah, Jorah, I mean, all he has is the name, and he says it perfectly, so kudos to him, hats off to him. Natalie Emanuel is very, very good, so she, she does it just right. And then uh, Peter Dinklage does his broken Valyrian very well, so it's not good, but that's the point. So really, they all just nailed it. It was a great scene. And this is you speaking High Valyrian to each other. Queso glaisat in derp tot dower. Queso glaisat in dip tula dower. Queso glaisat in derp tot dower. Scoria the news zaldriese isri. Scudi not sipi. Okay, that's straight up the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> that's all right. That was probably part of the point of the video. They were probably it was supposed to be funny that they. Like, weren't even close, but like, like that wasn't even close. That was, uh, all right, if you're gonna do it, then do it. It's kind of like for any language, if you're going to speak Spanish and you're gonna say, all right, I am going to speak the Spanish language, then don't sit there and say like, yo, quisiera a uh, ir al restaurant, eh? It's like, come on, just do it. Do it, get into it, you know what I'm saying? Do that with High Valyrian, man. Treat it, treat it serious. After that, figure out how all the letters are supposed to be pronounced and stick with it. I'm not trying to make it difficult on you. It's all, they're always pronounced the same way. And then be sure to like focus on those little bits of English that, that creep in, like the aspiration on PT and K and the English E vowels. <laughs> The producers of Game of Thrones contacted the Language Creation Society, who then put together a competition and announced it to language creators all over the world online. I then was one of the finalists that emerged. There were five finalists that were picked, and then the producers chose from that set of uh, finalists, and they chose mine, and so I became the official creator of Dothraki for Game of Thrones. This is Jason Momoa and Amelia Clark speaking Dothraki. Uh, Jason Momo, of course, is just like, he's just got this voice. He, ha he actually employs this uh, sound change when he speaks to Thraki that's very consistent across uh, all of his episodes. He has what I call the, the rock and roll baby sound change, which is any time a word is supposed to end with uh, the sound E, he says E. Eh. Kind of like when somebody is, you know, a rock and roll singer sings, when they're supposed to be saying baby, they say baby. So it's like you hear him say, shipkate, shipkate. That's uh, the word for uh, iron. 
And it's supposed to be shikathi, uh, shikathi, like that. But he says chikate. There's a part where Daenerys is trying to find a word for throne in Dothraki. She knows this word for chair, and so she's trying to search for this word in Dothraki that simply isn't there. And then Drogo turns to her and repeats the English word, and he says, Throne. Dios adore me. May Throne. Throne. Anyway, so at one point in time on Twitter, uh, some fan was coming to me saying like, why does he say throne with, uh, instead of saying throne when Dothraki has a TH sound and they even have an R coming after a TH, like in the word Dothraki. And I was about to respond and then another fan jumps on Twitter and says, well, obviously that's because it occurred in initial position and you can't have a word that begins with THR in Dothraki. And that was absolutely 100% correct. He didn't necessarily know why, but that is absolutely correct. You can't have a syllable that begins with thra. And so when you talk about like the word Dothraki, it's Dothraki, separate syllables. You can't have it at the beginning because the sound th in Dothraki used to be an old sound kla, kla. Very difficult to pronounce, but you can't put an R after that. It's very difficult. And so that's why Drogo turns to her and says, Thron, as opposed to Thron. Jason and I, we know each other. So it's like, yeah, you're good, buddy. Right on. You keep doing you. Man, I, uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for his spinoff, by the way. You, uh, you deserve, there, there needs to be a Drogo spinoff, and I'll be right there with you. Uh, Amelia, thank you for everything that you did. Your non-native... Uh, yet fluent Dothraki always sounded very nice. So, well done. Here's you speaking Dothraki to Jason Momoa. I mean, I really like the energy there, but there's a, a couple of things that are definitely uh, mispronounced, and so it's hard to figure out what's being said. The, the last thing she says is blood of my blood, and the way you do that is you address somebody, so you use the particle je, and then you say kloi kloi. So it's je kloi kloi, but it's very much je. It is very much not ze. Um, that's why the H is there. You don't ignore it. S is to S-H, as Z is to Z-H. So sa is to sha, as za is to ja. See, I, I, I thought everybody would get that. I guess, I guess not everybody gets that. So first of all, that is indeed how you speak to Jason Momoa, because you gotta have, you gotta have that energy there. So, I mean, when you focus on, yeah, focus more on, on delivery and, and presence than on correct pronunciation, you were doing well there. But yeah, the pronunciation was such that I couldn't, uh, figure out you know what what was being said and, and by the way a, afterwards what what Jason said to you is that uh, the the Beatles will feast on your lungs so just FYI <laughs> that's what he's saying and now this is Dwight Schrute teaching Aaron how to speak Dothraki I throat rip false again doc you throat rip false again D he she it throat rips false Agenda. More of a barbaric growl. Fourth, agenda. Louder, you're shouting it from the back of a horse. Fourth, agenda. Okay, so first, this construction was not something that I had ever imagined for Dothraki. Whoever was a writer of this episode really kind of studied the grammar. And so they created something pretty interesting. I was like, all right, I'll go with that noun incorporation. Uh, you did it right, so let's, let's do it. And so I made that a part of the Dothraki language after that. I call it the Shrutian compound. I don't know if I ever got to use it on the show. I don't, I don't think I did. There wasn't much Dothraki after this thing here. So to the writers of The Office, thank you very much for actually studying this to make sure that the Dothraki was correct. Uh, but not a thank you for not inviting me to the set. What's the deal? I found out because I watched it live. Literally, that's how I found out. Come on, man. Throw me a bone. And then, uh, Aaron, your pronunciation was pretty good. Just be sure you get the stress right. Sanatumari, J. Erin.
Good job. Here's you speaking to Rocky Seinfeld. Gene Hogar at the air. Mayak and Dar. Hale. And then that's like Loy Hogar, Dava Hayaron. If you think about, like, in your head, it's like, okay, what does fluent Dothraki sound like? And then you think, how can this be filtered through uh, somebody trying to mimic Jerry Seinfeld's accent and uh, George Costanza's accent? It's really good, especially the dude playing George. What the hell? That's, <laughs> that's really good. I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. How do they do that? Hey, guys, you know, I do have an email address. You could have always asked me or at least just sent me a message saying, hey, check out this thing we did because that was brilliant. I, I kind of hate you because of how brilliant that was. What are you even doing? Anyway, uh, great job. Uh, can't wait for episode two. When I first started working on Game of Thrones, when the first season aired, there were like maybe seven fans of the Dothraki language and I knew them all by name. It never really picked up, like it never became Klingon. It was never a huge phenomenon. And honestly, I was a little bit disappointed. But um, like just seeing the stuff that people have done, I cannot believe that this stuff exists. It's really, really cool. Honestly, I, I am touched, I am, I am amused, and I am blown away. So it's really cool to know that this stuff exists. Sana chumari yeriya, yeri lajaki tawaki. Much respect to you all. Uh, you are true warriors.